Today we're going to look at the Golden Ear BRX loudspeaker. It's a small bookshelf loudspeaker. Stand mount really is a better word for it. Let's see what it's got. All right, I've been listening to the Golden Ear BRX and uh, it's really an interesting speaker, if you ask me. $1,900 a pair. Uh, it's reasonably small, as stand mount speakers go. It's not tiny by any means. Uh, you know, a foot high, a foot deep, 10 inches wide, something like that. You can look up the specifications, of course. We'll put them in the show notes. But... Uh, I used it in a stand mount configuration, uh, placed as I normally do using a Jim Smith alignment and with my seating position at the 38% point in the room. I do this because it works uh, for one thing and the second reason I do it is to have a standardized way of approaching things so that there's some consistency and maybe some replicability in your environment. Anyway, on to the BRX because I want to get to the punchline. The punchline here is this is a very, very good speaker. I think uh, it sounds way better than you might expect for $1,900 a pair. And I say that coming from the perspective of someone who primarily listens to speakers in the $10,000, $25,000, $50,000, $100,000 $100, domain. So uh, I was almost shocked by what I heard. Um, we'll make some comparisons with two other speakers in a relevant price range to the Golden Ears, the Magnapan LRS and the Kef LS50 Wireless speakers that I know well and really like, and we can talk about some of the differences there. But first, I'd like to get down to why I think the Golden Ear BRX is so outstanding and compelling. The basic thing we've got going on here is transparency. You can hear back into the recording with these speakers in a way that is unusual for, I'm going to say, just about any loudspeaker. I don't mean it's better than the uh, super high-end stuff that I listen to all the time, but it is uh, darn competitive with what they can do. Now, let's talk for a second about what I mean by transparency, because the word is just a word, and especially if you're somewhat new to audio, which you might be if you're interested in speakers in this price range. Um, the definition might be you know, intuitively appealing, but not super clear. So what we're talking about is that between the performer and the original recording, there are a series of steps and then from the original recording to reproducing it through the loudspeakers, there's another set of steps. And uh, all of those steps can seem to add a little bit of haze or blurriness or uh, homogenization to the sound so that it doesn't sound really like it would sound if you were listening to the music in a concert hall or a club or any kind of live performance venue. And some of us, especially if you've listened to a lot of uh, hi-fi equipment and a lot of equipment from 10, 20 years ago, and maybe not super high-end stuff and maybe stuff that's not set up that well, have been, be, become accustomed to the idea that uh, audio systems inevitably add that little bit of blur, and it almost sounds normal. You don't even notice it uh, until you hear it taken away, and that's what I hear with the BRX. I hear 
it feels like a layer of, I call it gauze, uh, a, if you think in terms of visual analogies, a little bit of fog on the windscreen has been uh, taken away and all of a sudden it's like, you know, your giant picture window when uh, you've just had your condominium windows cleaned by the condo association. It's boom, it just uh, sound pops out and you hear it clearly, and yet, and this is really key, and yet it doesn't sound like it's artificially produced by some mechanism trying to fake clarity. It's just there with the sound of the original instruments. That's what transparency is all about. Uh, and the BRX is exceptionally transparent, and I find that particularly meaningful because it allows you to engage with the music and get involved with the music and hear and listen to what the different performers are doing in a super compelling and interesting way. Um, now, we'll talk in a minute about is that really what everyone wants? I don't think it is, but uh, for those of you who want musical involvement and engagement, this speaker is an excellent choice and uh, comes with relatively few, but not zero, downsides. Okay, so transparency is thing number one. The second thing the BRX does, and this often isn't combined with that transparency, and that's kind of how you know that the speaker is faking it a little bit. And I'm not saying the BRX is faking it, I'm saying how you know other speakers are faking it is their sound staging, the presentation of the material as if the band or the orchestra were performing on a stage in front of you, the sound staging of inferior speakers isn't presented as if the performers are in a real space. But the BRX does an excellent job of presenting the performer spread across the stage in front of you, and it gives you a good sense of front to back depth. And it does a third thing that I really like where each performer, the sound of his or her instrument or voice sounds like it's occurring within its own space. It's, it's hard to describe this, but when you hear it, you will immediately know what I'm talking about. Each instrument sounds like there's a performer on stage performing with that instrument in a real spatial location with air around it. Um, so I highly recommend you go hear these because uh, properly set up, they can do a thing that is pretty rare. Okay, so what we've got are two outstanding characteristics, transparency and sound staging, that give a sense of realism that invites you and engages you with the music and allows you to uh, focus on the artistry of the band or orchestra members and really enjoy it and just have a good time. I say there are relatively few downsides here because the BRX does this transparency and sound staging thing with um, so few musically deleterious artifacts. It doesn't do stuff that gets in the way. It doesn't have a high frequency zing that annoys you. Um, it's just it does what it does and nothing else, which again is necessary for that sense of realism. The way I would put this is the errors or the limitations of the BRX are largely subtractive. They aren't things that actively get in your way and are annoying. They're things that if you think about it, maybe you'll know, oh yeah, that isn't quite there. Is the transparency a 10 on a scale of 10? 
I would say the answer is no. It's more like nine on a scale of 10, which is for $1,900, still very, very impressive. But yes, there are speakers that go to 9.5 or 10 on a scale of 10. And so it is possible to have more. In terms of sound staging, uh, what I would say is sometimes missing is a sense of height. Sometimes the imaging, while it's beautifully presented left to right and front to back, uh, sometimes the imaging seems a little bit reduced to com compared to what you would hear in a concert hall in the vertical dimension. That isn't always true, um, and I'd be interested in understanding technically better why that's the case. Um, I listened to some metric. I've referred to this band before. It's a power pop band uh, that writes some really nice stuff, and some of their material, uh, it, it, it sounds big and tall and wide and deep, and it's got everything. And I suspect there are some phasing effects going on in the recording or something like that. So those get reproduced really nicely by the BRX. But sometimes the image seems just a little bit vertically compressed. I don't think that's really going to bug you. It might bug you. You can find products that will do a little bit better in the vertical dimension. I'll talk about that uh, down the road here. Uh, but anyway, that's a good example of, of the subtractive thing. Now, I want to get, in terms of the things that the BRX doesn't do, though, I want to get to the big one. This is not a speaker that delivers power base. That's just, I think, a fact of life. Um, the roll-off here... I haven't measured it yet. Uh, we'll get to that in the second part of this review sequence. Um, but I would say the you know the roll off is in the 80 to 90 hertz range, like a lot of smaller stand mount speakers do, and you're just not going to put out potent, punchy uh, bass in the 30, 40, 50, 60 hertz range. That's not what these speakers are all about. And I think a lot of people start by listening to does it do power punch bass? And um, this is just not the speaker for you unless, ah, unless you're willing to add a sub. So I do plan to do a second part of this review. Uh, Golden Ear is sending me a subwoofer that uh, matches reasonably well in terms of price with uh, these speakers. And it's a golden ear, so presumably there's some alignment of crossover slopes or something. I, we'll see. Uh, but I think with a sub, you could get the punchy bass that you want back while maintaining the really good transparency and imaging that these speakers were stunning at, frankly. But we shall see. Um, also, in the world of things that this speaker doesn't do, it doesn't do power punchy bass. Uh, it doesn't do much uh, low bass at all. Uh, so if that's your thing, this is probably not the place to go. In terms of warmth, I would say the speaker could be a little bit warmer, and there are many of us who feel that the uh, not only the mid bass, which by the way is articulate and very tight on these, that's part of why I'm hopeful about the subwoofer arrangement. Um, but I would say the the mid bass and the very low mid range, the range from 200 to 400 hertz on these is just a little bit light. Um, and that range where a lot of instruments have their fundamentals uh, could ideally be warmed up a little bit. I think part of that could be addressed with detailed setup. One of the things that doesn't get discussed very often, and you know, 
who knows why, but anyway, I'll say it right here, is listener position relative to the speakers is a fundamental component of setup. You may not have the flexibility in your listening area to do what I'm talking about, but moving the listener back and forth uh, relative to where the, uh, well, in the room is a fundamental way to align the listener with the room modes that you inevitably have. You get some uh, frequencies that are emphasized simply by the dimensions of the room, and those room modes will be picked up to a greater or lesser degree depending on where you're sitting. Uh, and while the 38% mark is typically or analytically the place for smoothest bass, it is not the place for the highest bass output. And so uh, I think you could dial that in a little bit in your room. In addition, you might have a smaller room than I do, although my room that I use for these smaller systems is not uh, terribly big, 17 by 13. Um, you, your room might be smaller than this, and that will mean your room modes are raised up higher, and they will tend to uh, emphasize the mid-bass and uh, even up into the lower mid-range more, and that may lead to a balanced more balanced sound than that I would like with uh, the BRX. So I think there's there's some tweaking and dialing in that uh, can be done with a speaker like this. And I actually think Golden Ear's choices of the way they voice the speaker mean that in the environments it might commonly be used in, um, it gives you a lot of flexibility for how you pull that off. Finding areas in the room uh, that give you a little bit more bass is not a problem. If you ha start with the classical setup that I'm using and you try to reduce the bass, that's not so easy. Uh, so once you've got too much bass, you're kind of, well, you're into very expensive treatments, which I do use, but you know, typically I think people in this price range would not be using, uh, which usually would include bass traps, which are decidedly not free. Um, and the spousal acceptance factor may be low. All right, so to summarize this part of it, I think the subtractive, the most obvious subtractive uh, deficits of the BRX are uh, somewhat limited imaging height and uh, a pretty early base roll-off that, I'll just say it right now, probably isn't going to work for some people, but may be addressable with uh, sub, and there will be people who uh, actually prefer the fact that these don't have muddy, turgid, uh, boomy, uh, thick sounding low frequencies and getting that out of the equation makes the music significantly more enjoyable. Uh, some of us want bass right or we don't want, I don't want to say bass at all, but we'd rather have it rolled off. So an outstanding speaker, uh, highly transparent, good imaging, subtractive uh, problems, which are image height, an issue, honestly, with tons of speakers, uh, and uh, lack of low and probably not enough mid-bass for some people, although I think the mid-bass could be addressed with uh, the particulars of your room in mind if you've got that freedom. So what that leads me to is uh, this is kind of a real audiophile speaker, and that sounds cool. You know, I once went in uh, when I was shopping for my first motorcycle, and I went into a dealer that carried both Yamaha and Honda, and we were asking, well, you know, how does the Yamaha compare to the Honda, and 
stuff like that, you know. And the guy said, he looked me right in the eye and he said, oh, you don't want the Yamaha. You crack the throttle open on that thing and you'll pop a wheelie instantly. And in my head, I'm like, I want the Yamaha. Uh, so for some of you, this is a real audiophile speaker that uh, is definitely a foreground, not a background listening speaker. Definitely an engage with the music speaker. Definitely hear the details speaker. And definitely a speaker that could be part of a path into the future where you build your system and keep working on it and add one sub and then because two subs will be smoother than one sub you add a second sub and you experiment with listening positions and you do some dialing in if that part of the hobby is appealing and fun for you this is a fantastic speaker if you want something that's uh, set it wherever you want and forget it i don't think this is necessarily your speaker. I don't mean that it'll be bad in that that situation, but there might be better choices or choices that would be more pleasing to you because you're not really interested in traditional focus on realism and accuracy, and you're not really interested in uh, setup and adjustments and building your system and all of those things that are traditionally part of the audiophile hobby. And I don't say that as bad or good. I just say that as those are the facts as I see them uh, with this speaker. But you could use this speaker as the basis of a genuinely high-end system. As an example, I put $10,000 of electronics on the front end of these things and uh, they really sounded great. Um, so they'll they'll show off and pay off uh, an investment in uh, future improvements in your system. Let me wrap up with a very brief comparison with a couple of other speakers that I think are in a similar price range and kind of appeal to uh, similar aesthetic sensibilities. Uh, those two speakers are the MagnaPan LRS Plus, which is uh, nominally a thousand dollars, but uh, is three or four dB less efficient, and therefore requires a bigger power amplifier. So let me just call it a wash. On by the time you buy the right amp for the MagnaPans, you could have saved the nine hundred dollar Delta. Uh, between the MagnaPans and the BRX. So they're roughly uh, the same price. I would say the MagnaPans have uh, many similarities in the general thing they're doing. Super transparent, great sound staging. The MagnaPans, by the nature of their uh, tall uh, panel array, tend to have a uh, bigger sense of stage height. Um, you can decide for yourself whether that's better or worse. Uh, I happen to think it's a nice effect. Since there's no height signal in stereo, it's kind of got to be an effect, but I think it's a, a good and useful effect, but that's just, that's just me. Um, I do think the MagnaPans are a little bit brighter. Both the BRX and the MagnaPan and the LS50 Wireless are tend to be uh, just slightly bright and need careful dialing in and uh, toe-in adjustments and positioning and room treatment to really get the um, upper mids especially to uh, sound correct and natural, but I would say the MagnaPans uh, are a tad brighter and seem to go 10 or 20 hertz deeper, uh, again, with excellent bass definition in, in that range. Uh, we'll find out down the road with more testing whether the MagnaPan setup or the BRX, the Golden Ear BRX setup, is better for use with uh, subwoofer because they seem 
ideal for subs in my mind, but subs are a uh, tricky business, as we all know. So uh, we'll see about that. The LS50, um, I feel, is one step lower on the transparency rung, but is an easier speaker to integrate into your room and use in different living environments. I'm talking about the LS50W specifically because uh, Kef has seen fit, and I think this is a genius move and one of the things I like the best about the LS50W, Kef has seen fit to give you an app for your phone that allows you to set some parameters like uh, the location in the room where the speaker will be used, which adjusts the base output by a small amount. So it isn't, these aren't big, uh, stupid adjustments. These are tweaky, dialing in things that really make a difference in how well the speaker seems to integrate with the uh, room environment and the level of reflective surfaces that you have in the environment, which makes it much easier to match with the room. So you can do with the LS50, the thing I was cautioning you on the Golden Ear BRX, which is you can I wouldn't do this with a, such a good speaker, but with the LS50, to some degree, you can put it in a reasonable position in the room and then use these adjustments to dial it in as opposed to having to, you know, build a tape grid on your floor and move your seating position and your speakers around uh, by an inch or two. It's, it's, just a, it's just a much easier process with the LS50. The LS50W is also a tremendous value. Uh, a little more expensive going in than the um, BRX or the MagnaPans, but it includes amplification. And you get pretty big amplification on the CAFs, and it's bi-amped with an electronic crossover um, and some uh, very sophisticated uh, driver technology with the uh, uh, meta system that Kef is using. So you're you're getting some really great technology, and I don't think you can match what the LS50W does at its price point with the uh, MagnaPan and the amount of power it needs, or frankly, with the BRX, because you'd have to use something like a $800 amplifier, and I just don't think there's an $800 amplifier made that will really do justice to the BRX the way I'm reporting on it. Um, you'd probably be fine with an $800 amplifier to start with, but uh, I can't tell you whether the BRX with such an amp would be able to do what the LS50 does. So I feel a little bit like the LS50 wireless is for a slightly different customer, one who loves music, loves musical engagement, loves transparency, um, but has a little more restriction on the environment that the speaker is placed in, a little more restriction on the location of furnishings and the amount of uh, acoustical treatment in the room and so on. Whereas the MagnaPan and the Golden Ear are a little bit more oriented toward the... Uh, I'm going to just say the traditional audiophile who wants to play with those things. So three great speakers uh, in this price range. I'm sure there are more. Those are three I'm familiar with or two besides the Golden Ear. I strongly urge you to hear the Golden Ear BRX if you can. It is uh, a joy to listen to. It's as simple as that. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, I hope you'll come back for more, and to do so, I hope you'll subscribe and click on the notifications bell. Uh, that helps us, but it also helps you because you can see when we're doing more reviews, uh, more interviews with industry luminaries, more audio history, more setup guides. Uh, we've got a lot of video material for you, and we hope you'll come back and uh, join us again. Thank you.